Hello and welcome to our next video about control engineering. This time we are going to talk about how to categorize controllers. This thing here. We are talking about this thing here, uh, the controllers. A very easy uh, way to, to distinguish between the controllers is construct, uh, constructive distinguishing. Okay, so there is a possibility of distinguishing from the construction from the construction. Yeah, there might on one hand there are electronical electronic controllers, yeah, and on the other hand there are mechanical, hydraulical, and pneumatical controllers. Mechanical, hydraulical, and pneumatic. Pneumatic controllers. So, what are, what can be those controllers? Yeah. For instance, we have learned, we have learned there is a, a pressure control valve. Yeah, an hydraulic pressure control valve, pneumatic pressure control valve. These would be hydraulic or pneumatic control system. Okay. For instance, yeah? so this is one art of distinguishing according to the construction of the controller. Okay. The other thing, which is might be a little more sophisticated, is is to distinguish according the function yeah? functional distinguish according the function basically there are two different possibilities let's have a look again on this picture the correcting variable okay the correcting variable one possibility is that this correcting variable can be zero or can be 100 percent or anything between so that the correcting variable can be 11%, can be 12%, can be 11.7%, can be 23.7435%, does not really matter. It's a continuous, continuous variable. Okay. So not only some values, but a continuous variable. Yeah. On the other hand, we could have a switching variable, a yeah, discrete variable. Only discrete values are allowed. Easiest thing, turn off or turn on. Okay. Switching controller. Yeah. So these are already the two possibilities. There is this continuous continuous. Yeah. Or on the other hand. We do have continuous, in German is also stetig, yeah. and on the other hand, we have switching, switching, yeah, or discrete, discrete or switching control systems. Continuous, the correcting variable, is a continuous variable. Discrete, the correcting variable, only has discrete values. Most simple, 1, 0 and 1. Okay. In both, in both uh, things, there might be, there might be uh, governors with and without additional power supply. There is the possibility of with auxiliary energy yeah and without and also on this side we do have the same with or without 
auxiliary energy. What does it mean? Let's start without. Without means we do have we do have this comparer here, yeah? this comparator here. And if whatever is coming out here yeah, is powerful enough, is powerful enough to already build the correcting variable, yeah? then we don't need auxiliary energy. Then we have a regular we have a regulator without auxiliary energy. Yeah? Controller without auxiliary energy. If this is too not that powerful enough to generate this correcting variable by its own, but needs to be amplified somehow, yeah, then we would need to have here additional energy, an energy input into our controller. This is with auxiliary energy. Okay, that's it. With auxiliary energy is always necessary, is always necessary if this thing what is coming out here is a different type of energy than this thing which is coming here. Yeah. So so if we are having here, I don't know, pressure, yeah, and here we would need to have uh, electrical power, we would anyway need to have auxiliary energy. Most of the things will have auxiliary energy. Okay. So these, these are the, the ways of how to, to distinguish or how to categorize controller. So one, one uh, example, let's make one example, continuous without auxiliary, auxiliary energy, there are these there are centrifugal governors. Yeah. Here there are weights. Yeah. These are masses here, and they are mounted, and it can be turned. Yeah, they are turning. Yeah? And the faster this is turning, the more the masses will go to the outside. Okay, the more the masses will pull apart centrifugal forces, yeah? and then we have here something which is pulled, the, the more speed, it is pulling here this upwards, yeah? and with this upwards pulling, we can control a throttle valve, for instance. Yeah? So with every time we get too much speed, the throttle valve is closed by, this, by these masses, by the centrifugal forces of these masses. Every time we are too low in speed, the masses will go down and will open the throttle valve and the engine will speed up. So this is a speed, speed governor with centrifugal, centrifugal forces. Okay? So this is a mechanical governor. Okay? It's continuous because the position of the masses can be any place. Yeah? So it's continuous. And it's without auxiliary energy because it simply takes the energy from the comparator comparing the wanted speed with the with the position, the actual speed. Yeah? Of course the energy is then taken out of the process. It's also clear. Somewhere the energy must come. Yeah? So this is a mechanical governor, continuous without energy. I hope without auxiliary energy, of course. Yeah, I hope this is now a little bit more clearer what I was talking about. And then, basically, we can also distinguish between analog analog controllers and digital. Digital controllers. Okay. Analog. This would be analog controller. Yeah. There's nothing digital. Analog means it's just uh, this thing here. 
the controller is working analog. This means whatever is coming inside here will get somehow gained, yeah, amplified, maybe a little bit deformed and whatever. Yeah. So it will have a certain transfer from here to here and this will be the correcting variable. And everything which is happening inside here, this is analog. Yeah. So if this is big, this will get big and so on. Okay. So according a, a control law, yeah, we have here gained transformation, we have here a certain a certain behavior and time behavior yeah? and this will produce from the control deviation the correcting variable. Okay? This here is one of these analog controllers, mechanical analog controller. Electronic analog controller would be something with operational amplifiers. There are often operational amplifiers inside. Okay? Analog. And the second part is digital. What means digital? Digital means whatever is come inside here yeah, is now digitized, transferred or converted into a number and the controller is cal calculating with this number yeah, a new correcting variable. Yeah? So it is not only deformed, you can, you can think of a lot of calculations you can do. Yeah? Mathematics is a huge field, yeah? so you can you can simply. There is no limitation. There is no limitation in the law, yeah, in the, in 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 how to treat this control deviation. Yeah? So this control deviation will get into a number and this number is then with mathematical calculations transformed into the correcting variable. Yeah. Basically is happening the same. Yeah. However, if I calculate here, yeah, I have more options than just deform and gain. Yeah. This is why digital controllers do... Well, there are no electronic analog controllers, they are gone, they are away. Yeah? They are only digital controllers. If they are electronic, they are digital controllers. Yeah? Analog controllers are in a museum, maybe. Yeah? However, one disadvantage of digital controllers I also have to mention, because this transferring from a value to a number needs a little bit time, okay? And this little bit time means the calculator, the controller, is working with just a snapshot. Yeah? In an analog controller, if this is changing, this is immediately changing also. Yeah? There is no cycle or something like this. In a digital controller, we take a snapshot, calculating out of the snapshot, what we need to do, and then we take the next snapshot. So it's always tack, 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 yeah? It's chopped a little bit, yeah? This is why digital controllers need to have a very, or let's say, a fitted, a fitted time, timing value, okay? So if you are using, if you're using a regulator, a controller, digital controller, which taking two less snapshots, uh, then we maybe produce an unstable system, just because we only reacting on a snapshot which was taken too long time ago, and the reality meanwhile looks a little bit different. Okay. That is the disadvantage of digital digital governors. However, you know the disadvantage. With nowadays calculating power, the disadvantage is a minor disadvantage. So this is why these digital, these digital governors, these digital controllers are the ones we are using right now. Okay, so that's it for, for the distinguishing, for the categorization 
of controller. Now we are starting to talk about, I already mentioned something like this, I said we are having some sort of transfer from this side to this side. Yeah, We are talking about transfer functions. Yeah? We are talking about blocks and transfers and so on. This is, let's say, the spine, the backbone of of control engineering. This will be in the next video then. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.